Many new users of 3ds Max find their first steps with the software to be relatively painless. Its architecture is designed to provide easy access to its powerful functions and procedural workflow, with a relatively low level of technical knowledge being needed. Of course, those who have been through the journey of learning how to use 3ds Max, and more specifically the stack, will appreciate that a firm grounding in the fundamentals of procedural workflow and the nodes that lie behind it will pay back greatly in understanding this system. So what exactly is the stack? The stack is 3ds Max's main interface to the node-based engine that underlies the software. It allows us to build chains of discrete units called modifiers that allow us to take a simple primitive object and evolve it through into a complex final result. The basic premise of the stack is that we start with a simple object such as a cube as a foundation and then we add a series of targeted tool-like units to our object, each of which changes it in some way. As these tools always modify our object in one way or another, Autodesk settled on the name of modifier for these tools. These modifiers are depicted as being placed one on top of the other, like boxes, with each building on or changing the object in some way. As the display is vertical, the modifiers are seen to stack up, and hence the interface to these modifiers is called a stack. Let's actually have a look at the stack in 3ds Max. If we look in uh, this panel here, which is called the, the Modify panel, you'll see that we have a number of diff different elements, which we'll actually cover uh, later. So let's very quickly actually show the stack in action. This is actually the stack here, this window. And if I get some modifiers and I apply them to this teapot, we'll get a Ben modifier. I'll actually just bend the teapot over in this direction. And uh, let's say we get a lattice. And I'll just actually make some of the uh, things in that a little bit smaller. There we go. And I'll add another modifier. Let's say a freeform deformation. We'll actually put this lower down in the stack. I'll actually put it here. And I'll just go in quickly and edit the control points on that. So I'm just using some of the features here of the stack. I'll just scale these outwards. There we go. And now if I go back up the stack, you can see that each of these modifications is applied. Now, it's important to realize at this point that each and every object you see in 3ds Max is the product of its base object, which you can see here is a cylinder its stack of modifiers, which you can see here, and its transform node, which you can't actually see. What do I mean by this? Well, to make 3ds Max more efficient, all the objects in the scene are treated as having no transform for the purposes of evaluating the modifications carried out in the stack. What this means in plain English is that each object is actually at the center of the world with a position of 0, 0, 0, a rotation of 0, 0, and a scale of 1, 1, 1, before the modifiers are actually applied to it. Now, this cylinder is actually in the same position that I've just described. If you look at its transform, you'll see it's got a, a X, Y, and Z position of uh, 0, 0, 0. If we go up to its scale and right-click on it, you'll see that it's got a scale of 100, 100, 100, or as I said earlier, 1, 1, 1. You can think of it whichever way you want, either as a percentage or as a, as a fraction of 1. And if we go to the rotation gizmo, you can also see that we've got a rotation of 0, 0, 0. So the object isn't rotated at all. And that's actually the way all the modifiers treat the object. But what's the reason for this? Well, each object is acted upon by the modifiers in its stack, as you can see here, from the bottom to the top. At each point, the object is altered in some way by the currently evaluated modifier. But its actual transform never changes during this stage. Finally, at the top of the stack, when all the modifications are taken place, the transform node for that object comes into play and its values are applied to the object, transforming it into its final position in the world with its final orientation and scale. Why does Max actually handle things this way, though? Well, the main reason is that each modifier actually then knows that the object is not transformed in any way. And from this, it can also assume that all of the sub-objects of that node have no transform applied to them either. As a result of this, each modifier does not actually have to adapt its effect to the position.